What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in this video, I wanted to talk about the process that I followed for modeling a historic building in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so part of the reason that I wanted to do this is I just want to model more on the channel. I don't really have an opportunity to do that very much. So I might do more videos like this depending on how many people watch. But I want to work on my modeling skills and also teach you some more like work for later things in SketchUp. So to start off, I had to find a plan that I could actually model that's in like the public domain because that's actually kind of hard for me is finding projects that I can model because you never know if images are like copyrighted or anything like that. And I settled on starting with this older house that's in North Carolina. I'll link to the plans in the notes down below. But you need to start, but I started by downloading Downloading these files and bringing them into SketchUp. And so for the first step, what I did is I imported the reference images that I downloaded from um, Wikimedia and I brought them into scale. And so by bringing them into scale, what that does is it gives you the ability to see kind of how the building comes together. I like to set this up with as many elevations and floor plans as I can. And what I did is I set them on their own tags so that I could toggle them on and off. But by setting them to scale, I can use them as modeling resources. And so so the next step was to bring in some additional pages in here so that I could see what the building looked like from different angles. And so I followed the same process where I bring in an image, I set it to scale, but in this case I would rotate it until it was standing up. And a lot of the time what I found to be helpful was drawing like a little guideline on the base of the house that I could snap to the guideline that I had in the other location. So I actually came in here and I did this for multiple different sides so that I would have uh, reference images on each side of the building. And so my first modeling step is usually to go through and model out the entire perimeter of the building. Note that in this case I actually drew based on the dimensions that were drawn on the sheet so that I had a floor plan that was actually accurate from a scale standpoint. So um, usually I go through and I'll create the entire footprint of the building so that I have something to work from. From there it was just more of the same, going through and adding the additional elevations. So um, I tried to get one from every side that I could so that I'd have the ends of the building as well as creating recessed ones um, for like the porch uh, based on the actual floor plan itself. Itself, so I could put that in an accurate location. One thing to note about that is I'm putting all of these on tags so I can quickly toggle them on and off. And so then it was time to start roughing out the building. And in this situation, what I'm doing is I'm using the building elevations to figure out basically the bottom of the slope of the roof and then the highest point at which the roof starts to slope down. That allows me to accurately model out this roof. So what I could have done is I could have come in here and used like a, you know, a 6 to 12 or a 3 to 12 or whatever roof slope. But in this case, I just used the highest point and the bottom of the eaves of, of the roof in order to rough out this shape, which allowed me to kind of get started with the 3D building shape here. One thing that's always important is giving the roof thickness to match the thickness of the assembly in the real world. And one thing I made sure to do was delete out this face where the porch offset is. So I just drew a line up to split this and then um, I basically deleted out the face and then drew in a line behind it um, that would represent the interior wall and let SketchUp just kind of heal the face in on its own. And one thing I made sure to do was group the small building separately from the big building so that I could toggle it off if I need to. But then it was in to do the same thing with the main building. The main building is actually easier because this building doesn't have an offset roof. It just has a roof that peaks in the middle of the shape. So it was just a question of drawing the profile of the building and extruding it out with the push-pull tool and then using the offset tool. And I just used the image as a reference in order to get the thickness correct. All right, so next up was modeling the windows. And looking at the outside of this house, I kind of made the call that all of these windows look to be about the same. So the goal here was to model a window that I could reuse. So I started just with kind of the exterior shape of the window just to kind of block this out and also doing a little bit of an offset and a push pull to give it some thickness. But then I went through and I modeled out the window shutters. The window shutters made heavy use of components because I created an exterior frame and then I went inside and I divided an edge to figure out um, basically the size 
of the louvers that are in there. And then I modeled them out as rectangular components. And I used the move tool in array copy mode in order to create a copy of those components um, or a number of copies of those components that fit inside of the space. Because they were all components, after I copied them and I got the spacing right, I can go back into one component, and change the rotation, and the rotation of all of those changed as well. And modeling out the rest of the window is the same grind that it always is. Um, basically, you're just looking at the way that the window is built and um, creating the frames and trying to get them to an accurate thickness. So in this case, I drew an exterior frame, figured out the thickness of that frame and gave it some thickness. And then I went in and I modeled out the individual panes of glass. And for the panes of glass, I use components um, because they're basically a repetition of the same object. That way, later on, if I need to make a change, um, then I can just change one of them and all of them will change. But it's just a question of creating one individual pane of glass um, and just uh, repeating that over and over within that same object. And then taking that whole upper frame and copying it down, making sure that you have that kind of realistic recess and just kind of creating the window assembly in a realistic way, the way that windows would actually be built. And then from there, it's just a question of repeating this object over and over again. So in this situation, um, it was just a question of drawing over the geometry of the wall behind the window and cutting a hole there. And then just using the move tool in copy mode in order to copy this object so that it aligned with um, where the actual windows would be in the real world. So um, once you kind of understand the move tool in copy mode and working with components, this actually gets really easy to do. And it allowed me to do all of the windows on the side of this building without doing a whole lot of additional work. Things like siding on this building are just going to be a simple siding material. Um, I don't see any reason to go through and model out actual siding slats in here. So I just use the size options of the material in order to reduce the siding texture that I placed on the side of the building to be the same size as the siding that was actually shown in the elevation image. All right, so this door was a fun one, and I think you're going to like this. So um, what I ended up doing with the door, because it's a very complex door, is the actual door itself wasn't that hard. You just kind of rough out the size of the door, you get the frame in there, and uh, you have kind of a base. All right, so the first step was what I did is I figured out the depth of these little trim pieces using the actual floor plan piece itself. And so what I could do is I could just come in here and just model out a little rectangle for each one of these and then just kind of extrude them all the way up. And I use that as kind of a base. But then once I had the base in here, I took this image and I kind of modeled this, I modeled a profile based on the ins and outs that you could see from this vertical image right here. So I just kind of traced along um, the, the profile of the trim that went on this building. But then all I had to do was just kind of trace a path along the little trim pieces right here that this could follow. And once I traced that path, I could actually use the follow me tool and extrude this along that path to actually create a complex trim profile that matched up with what I was seeing on the image without having to come in here and do a whole bunch of like push pulling or anything like that. You just select the path, um, activate follow me, then you select the object and it'll extrude along that path. And then the base pieces was exactly the same thing. So I just took the bottom of the trim pieces, moved them up and then used the follow me tool in order to create my base trim as well. And so for modeling these kind of like uh, these inset panels, what I did is I drew, drew a profile and then I offset that profile in. So I offset it in, then I offset it again and I push pulled a recess in here. And then I used the scale tool on this front panel in order to scale it in to get this tapering wood look in here um, so that I have this kind of panel. I used the same thing on the door a little bit later on. Window panels were kind of the same as the windows that we did up above. Lots of offsetting, lots of push pulling, and lots of making sure that I had the uh, that I had the depth of the glass panes and the other things in here, just so these didn't look flat. Um, so I used a lot of the push pull tool and specifically the double click function that repeats the same depth of an offset or of a push pull of the last time that you use the tool. So um, not difficult, just time consuming. 
So the fireplace was interesting because I actually modeled it on the drawing in its location, but then uh, when I actually push pulled it up, it didn't align with what I was seeing on the elevations. Um, I just used the push pull tool and aligned it with the elevations rather than what's on the floor plan. Um, since I'm more matching the outside of this building, that felt like the right choice in this case. Um, but I'm not sure why the floor plan and the elevation actually didn't line up with where the uh, fireplace was. Adding windows to the end of the house was as simple as creating a copy of the windows I'd already used, placing them on the surface, and then cutting openings for the actual windows themselves in the existing walls. To complete the front door, I did the same thing that I did with the side panels, where I split the door up into individual panels or faces. I offset them in, and then I push-pulled them, um, and then I scaled them. So I used the scale tool to create the taper of the individual panels. And for the ones that repeated, I did that on one side because I could copy them over to the other side of the door in order to complete the result. For the recessed porch, I started by tracing the profile of this trim piece that goes over the top um, using the arc tool in order to add the arcs and circles, and I gave it a little bit of thickness. For the columns, I just traced the profile of the columns, and then I used the follow me tool around a three-sided box in order to extrude this so that I had columns that matched the details that were shown on the elevations. One thing that I will note is I'm finding myself using the flip tool a lot more to flip symmetrical objects and to uh, flip objects along points. So that's rapidly becoming a tool I'm using a lot more than I did previously. So it's a great one to learn how to use. The door was just a repetition of the process that we've talked about before. Um, I think uh, stuff like this is probably why these videos don't tend to do very well, is because a lot of it is just repetition of the same workflow. So you rough out the door in the frame, then you add detail to your door. Um, in this case, I modeled it further up just so it was aligned with this uh, elevation, and then I moved it back to align with the back wall. Um, so the, the door process is something that once you kind of have an idea of how it works, you just end up doing it over and over again. And so placing the additional windows on the side of the building is just more of the same. So I'm not really gonna show that in this video, but it's basically just copying the windows that you already have. Now, the piece of this that I was probably most concerned about was modeling out the trim that's on the outside of this building. Cause this building has a very complex trim profiles. But luckily, this set of plans actually has a sheet um, that is to scale that I could use to trace those trim profiles, and then I could extrude them along the paths that I need. So I started by importing that sheet to scale, and then starting to trim over those different profiles um, so that I had them for uh, use on the elevations. And so one thing I did is I placed this on the side of the house just to kind of compare the trim profile that I drew with what was actually going on on the house. And for whatever reason, maybe I set up my scale wrong, I'm not really sure, um, the actual profile that came off the plan is like double the size that it should be. Now, I don't know if that's an issue with the way that I set up the scale on my drawing or not, but in this case, I've got kind of a view of this profile on the elevation. So what I did is I just came in and I scaled it down so that it matched the size. Since I'm not actually going out and like building the trim profile, it didn't really seem to matter that much since this is more a visual to kind of match what was built on the building. Um, but sometimes you do run into issues like these that do need to be sorted out. But I just took this and resized it so that it looked like it, it aligned with what the trim was supposed to look like on the building from the elevations. All right, and so this was kind of the moment of truth where I had to come in here and actually extrude this. And what I did is I placed the profile on one end of where the trim would stop. And what I did is I drew a path around the house um, that turned the corner and then stopped where the trim profile would stop on the other side. And then I just selected that profile. I selected the three edges that I drew and I used follow me to extrude this along the path. And I think the trim that came out of this actually looked really good. Now on the front, and this was kind of interesting, they actually used the same trim profile. And thinking about it now, I probably should have had this kind of return back to the face of the building, but that's okay. Um, basically with this trim profile, they've got the same profile following along with this kind of like diagonal 
face in here. So what I did is I aligned this profile um, so that it's laying down. Well, one of the things about the follow me tool is if I draw a line up to the top, and then across to the other side, and then I use the follow me tool to extrude along that, this is actually going to adjust the orientation of that face to follow along with that path. So I was able to really quickly create this kind of like diagonal piece in here like this. Now, one thing I didn't notice is this upper window was a little bit smaller than the other. So I did have to go in there and make a few adjustments um, just so that this wasn't running into my trim. But overall, I'm very happy with the result this created. And then the final piece is there's trim on the corners of this building. And so this was just kind of a continuation of what we've done in the past where I came in here and I traced out the profile of the shape. I used the follow me tool to turn it around the corner. And then I used the flip tool in order to place these on all four corners of the building. So after adding this final trim piece, I thought the building looked a lot better um, and a lot more finished. And so I really enjoyed this exercise. Uh, one of the things that's difficult for me is the videos where I do long form modeling don't seem to do very well. So I'm trying to hit on a format where people are actually interested in watching and I get to do a little bit more modeling. So I'm gonna try some different ways out to see how that works. So leave a comment below letting me know what you thought about this format. If you'd like to see more videos like this, I'd just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do wanna learn more about how to use SketchUp, you can check that out in my course um, at the SketchUp essentials.com slash course. I'll link to that on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.